Hey gang, it's Little Daddy here. We're here at uh, the Motorcyclepedium in Newburgh, New York. Just pulling in, we see all these crazy trucks. I don't know, I might want to trade for this wall of death truck right here. Looks pretty cool. Anyway, we're here to see some of our old trikes, dude. And the Captain Peppies is here now too. The motorcycle carrier. But inside, hey, check it out in Teddy's Museum. He's got tons of stuff. This is the Motorcyclepedia. He's got everything. So when you come here, just give yourself a few days to look around. I wonder where that Teddy's at. And what does the king's pin of motorcycles have? This is Steve McQueen's desk right here. Whoa. Check out all these choppers at Ted's museum. It's unbelievable. This guy is the kingpin of choppers and bikes and everything. When I was a kid working at Choppers Magazine, people built all kinds of choppers out of all different kinds. Harleys, Triumphs, BSAs, you know, even Corvairs. Dad had a Volkswagen bike that Von Dutch built. And uh, it all uh, ended up, you know, being in uh, different magazines back in the day. We built this in 68, that's a Baba Quista Paces Triumph on the back there. We had a Sportster to go on there, but Dad nixed that idea for the lighter Triumph. And this was really a beautiful Triumph. Check out that red flake. A V6, Osmo Bubble Buick engine. Remember Dad got all the bands and everything. Dad welded this whole engine together. Remember that, Chuck? Yeah, but before that, we had a build, that, like this is a widened Corvair front end, and then with the frame rails, and then Henry's, you know, machined the rear end so it'd be over to one side. And then the bike was gonna go on the back. That was the Sportster dad bought from Laidlaws, but ended up uh, trading it out. And we were gonna put the Triumph from the first Choppers magazine ever, the one where, you know, Fuller's holding that Triumph and has the Watson t-shirt on. That was gonna go on here, but, my mom and dad saw this bike at uh, one of Gary Canning's car shows, like the second car show it ever went to, and it was built by Baba Quistapace up in Hollister. And my mom and dad just went over and like said, look, we'll give you a couple grand for that bike right now. And then remember every Christmas we got a big bag of nuts from Hollister, because he had a, a walnut farm or something, it was wild. But this bike was so, banging then and it's still so banging now like a lot of people will copy all this now I know a guy that built a bike that looks just like this just to show it and all this you know we man we went through a lot of you know the drawing how Newt did it and it has a little thing holding it up here well dad didn't want to build that because of course it would be hiding the bike so that's why a lot of cars we built don't look exactly like the drawing that Newt came up with you know like the the bell headers. Dad wanted these 180 pipes with this because that was big on boats in the end and you have a lot of happening here, you know. But to build the walls up around this to put the bike in. I remember me and my brothers have to hold this bike here like that. Dad made those mounts and then we put the chain on. Wow. It was still scary towing it around. Because we towed, we towed it in a big box truck and had really wide tires on it and you had to change the tires in the back and then drive it up these ramps, you know. But well, how, the yeah. floor of the bed was you know, pretty high. Yeah. And dad, he didn't fit in here too good, so Jim Jacobs would drive it up sometimes. All oh, right, did see dad in it? Oh yeah, dad's been in it. And at one time, like I was saying, this lived in front of uh, Samson Brothers, uh, what, what was it, over on Alameda? Alameda, Jim Yeah, and so <laughs> dad sent me one time, you know, because I have my, he, we're building the California Cruiser then, and this had a chrome alternator on it. Yeah, it still does. And he goes, he gives me an alternator, he goes, go down to Sam, go down to the junkyard and check, trade out the uh, chrome one off the Cap'n Peppies and, you know, bring that back for the California Cruiser. But I drove this one a lot, it's kind of, but the concept was this, is that you drove towards the big city like you'd be going into New York or L.A., and then at a certain point, you would be like park and ride. You'd park this car and just ride the bike to work. You know, so it's like an early concept car of, you know, too much traffic and all that. But also hard to see out of, but very, very cool. And I don't want to get in it and out of it right now because like my back is shot. 
but these are pretty much the whole the whole way we built it. These have like little one by pieces of wood in here that we glassed over. All this was formed with plaster. And then once I remember one time coming back and the whole car, side of the car was missing. We'd have to put that back up. Barracuda tail lights. The M is originally for missing link. It was about the year when uh, they got that picture of the Bigfoot running, you know, like, uh, I don't know, I think it was up in Oregon. Jerry Crew, you know what to do. Anyway, we're gonna call it the missing link. And so dad made that M on there and it went on. And then one day Robert Williams came to the shop, you know, to work and he goes, Ed, I got a, I got a name for that, Captain Pepe's Motorcycle and Zeppelin Repair. And I go, dad, what, what about the M, dude? He goes, I we're just gonna tell everyone that stands for Maywood. <laughs> right. <laughs> But it actually was the uh, first name of the car, the missing link. Oh, here we are with the candy wagon. Wow, this was a big departure from the two wheelers we were building. And uh, dad wanted to build these because of course we could build bodies for them and like, make them look really crazy and wild. Uh, more than you could do with just a two wheeler. We had a great time. I'll just take this home with me. No, here you go. <laughs> the signature hat. Yeah, uh, don't let that fly away. Yeah, so Dad thought he was going to fill this with candy and just throw it out to kids and stuff. And it was like, you know, 1968 and Bass Lake had just happened and, you know, outlaw bike clubs. They weren't inviting Dad to no parades. Me and I remember the day me and Dad just hand laid this thing, dude. It was like we were off that weekend from the museum or something, you know. Because we only pulled like maybe two or three bodies of this. And then Dad come in, of course, and did all this. You know, was good. Is this the is this the original phone one of the phone numbers? Yeah. Dude, and believe it or not, I, I know this guy. This was the pay phone at the shop because the employees were using too many uh, the you know personal phone all the time. Ed Fuller was. So when the guy comes to put in the number, we just gotten the you know the two one three thing, and the phone guy's in there putting in the pay phone. And Dad goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I got a few phone numbers here you could have." And Dad goes, "You got any phone number with the number sixty nine in it?" And the guy goes, yeah. And he gave us that in five and seven, nine, six, nine, seven. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a, I just happen to remember that for some stupid reason. So what, <laughs> so it's got a 68 plate. You think that's the year? Yeah. No, it was. Yeah, this is the year. Dude, and still all that, you know, cause dad would use like a one shot yellow instead of sizing for the lead. And the clear even, I know, it's stood up pretty good, dude. Well, me and Dad put a lot of miles on the Tree Viper here. And right now we're showing you the uh, patent from 1970, the drawings for the United States. These are the handlebars we made for the kit. <clears throat> These were the first bars we made. No. These were the, like the, the prototype. Yeah, these were the prototype. Yeah, this is the one he always drove. This is the one he always drove. This is, this is the, started out as Wheeler Dealer and it had the phone number on there, and then, then it was uh, vitamin. vitamin C, vitamin E for Ed and Carolyn, his third wife. And then it became the Tree Viper. But this is the one we drove everywhere, dude. I don't think he had the big big mirror on it, but maybe he did put that on at the end. It's got a couple little ammo cans back here where Dad used to put the gun. We tried to, you know. And then he had these foot pegs like this with the little arrows on the front and then ground and with like little things on the foot pegs because he said when he ran over squirrels and skunks and shit he wanted to kill them <laughs> but instead of leaving them dead in the road you know I mean instead of like leaving them just flipping in the road he wanted to make sure he killed them but a lot of time he, these, he had these probably out a little further see like I was telling you dad liked to have his you know, legs up, back legs. It even feels better on my back just having it like this. Yeah. So then, when he made it back into uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, which was pretty much the same color. Anyway, the movie ones, that happened because there was a, a, a black guy that was a Mater D at, uh, I think it was, he was the Mater D at a, at a restaurant owned by the captain from, uh, what was his name, from Gilligan's Island. Anyway, he had a, a lobster shack downtown or whatever. And this black guy would come and he goes, hey, Big Daddy, we just want to 
have bikes. You know, they all had money, dude. They were, you know, cash up. They was working for Gilligan's Island's captain at his lobster house. You know, guys from Hollywood. And so they bought a bunch of bikes too. And I think that's where that connection came from. Was from oh, Alan Hale. That was Alan the guy. Hale. You, Alan Hale. You got to take. Yeah, dude, it know, takes a second. You got to be a certain. You got to be a certain age to be able to yeah. bring those names up. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that Otis Smith. You know, his guys painted all those. Yeah, what was it? Oh, what was her name? Oh, Tina Park. Trina Parks. Yeah. Yeah, that was the connection to Alan Hill. They were doing some movie, you know, and he hooked them up. And the guy, the Mater D, he's come down there all the time. They were, they'd bring me in Big Daddy food and stuff, you know, from Alan Hill's restaurant. Big Daddy, here's what I from last night. I go, oh, oh, oh. What did I do? Yeah, good times. Chopper's Magazine had a section called Mailbox, and so we built this trike to emulate, you know, what a mailbox might look like if it was a trike. It's powered by a Crosley engine, dude, that Jim Jacobs had a little Crosley in his, I don't know, his garage in Compton or something where he lived at the time with his parents. So uh, we built this bike out of veneer, and uh, you know, that's why the body is real thin, and then we glassed that. We just used all those different colors flakes. We didn't use silver flake and then candy over it. So that's yellow, orange, blue, purple, green flake all on the, and then we got some clear from Watson that was a little easier to color sand than uh, laminating resin. And this here bike is one of the only paint jobs that has survived this original paint job all these years. Thank you, Teddy. You're the man. Hey man, where has Adam brought us to? Oh, dude, I remember seeing that on the cover of Street Chopper, one of the McMullins magazines. Jay Leno, look out, come on. I want to challenge you right now. Bring it on. Five toys, I bring five toys. Let's see. <laughs> We're going to have the old toy challenge. I think this is right where uh, Hicks starts working on my tooth right here. Ah! Oh, my, my tooth's bad. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> oh, what a great time we had that day. Hey Steve, check it out over in this building over here. Look at all the posters and stuff Adam has. Man, this is crazy. For years, Teddy's been collecting stuff and Adam has this little place over there on the side. This is on the Hudson River where they do some filming and what have you. Wow, look at that dual panhead drag bike, dude. There you go. I'm a gambler, I love gambling. Look, look, look at this, this is like a 19, 1910. Everything is mechanical here. Boom. Let's see if we can hit the jackpot. Whoa, almost. Oh, yeah, we got it. Yeah, we won. Yeah. You slide like this. I'll take them some waters right here. And one of those little bags that, you know, drips water. Go haul ass. I go like this. You gotta look like you're hauling ass. Put your hat backwards, bro. <laughs> Put green screen to behind us and be like, oh my Make god. Make it right. Oh no. Post-production, oh the door open, I fell out.